and that is, makes this a, a fairly aristocratic theory of justice. Uh, and that's as we as we started at the end of last uh, period, one of it probably one of its big weaknesses. Is that it, re it reinforces a caste system. It, it, it theorizes and reinforces a caste system. Well, so could you say that the guardians stop at like the Antos? I would say that the, I mean, some of like only the best of the guardians make it here. So even that this is a twenty-year process of education, right, in the liberal arts and music and gymnastics and all these things that are supposed to bring the body and the soul and the mind into harmony with each other. Most of those folks don't get there. I mean, think about it in a modern university system. Even if you go to the most elite colleges, I don't know, University of Virginia, not all of you are going to get the invite to go to a PhD program. Right? And that is, that is an invite. That somebody that's in that club says, I want you, I think you would be a good colleague. That's an invite into the club. Not all of you are going to get there. That part of all of this kind of stepping through are different points where certain people keep getting pushed forward. And other folks don't. So as a, like a modern metaphor, but everybody that gets put into the process doesn't make it to the end. As a matter of fact, this process is kind of made in the amount of discipline and rigor that's involved in it. It's made to kind of weed some folks out. So that what comes out at the end are the folks that truly were, were in the position. And have truly perfected what they were needed such that when they came out into the sunshine and made their adjustments, they could actually behold the truth. See what I mean? Withstand it, and then have the desire to come back and share it, which we talked. We, I think we talked about that enough. That that still is the, the praxis part. Is still a very important part of this. This is a leadership theory. Would you say sometimes that like the guardians almost like they they skip over? I don't know if it's possible or not. Like to skip over the antos or up there and think that they've got like they go to thinking that they have the wisdom to like the practical wisdom and becoming like a statesman and stuff over to the. Oh, oh, okay, so this was the, the meddling thing, yeah. right? The, one of the important things about harmony and things being in their proper place is that, sure, you probably are going to get people that are like, I need a PhD to do that, I can do that, you know, just as I am. Mm -hmm. Right? But that would be meddling. Right? If they didn't achieve the level of excellence of a certain type that they were supposed to get, sure, they might believe they could do it, but they shouldn't do it. And, they, all they could, all, and, and even trying to participate in the political leadership right, would be problematic and would be unjust. It would be unjust on an individual level, right? Clearly, if they had that attitude, that might be one of, one of these different parts of the soul operating at a, you know, out, of, out of balance, right? Operating stronger on their, on their rationality than it should, right? Because their rationality would tell them that, to maintain their proper place. So maybe the spirited side, right, in this case, would be the added would, would be having an undue influence on the soul. You see what I mean? So that injustice in that case would be the soul out of whack, right? But then that would also lead to if you had guardians trying to do what the philosopher Kuhn were doing, that would be unjust able flares too, because we've already determined that the guardians do the guardian work and the philosopher king do the philosopher king work. And when you meddle, that's the the myth of the metals or whatever. When you meddle between classes, you create an unjust state of affairs. See what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's all this homology and that works right on over here. Guardians aren't about wisdom. Wisdom is the fulcrum of leadership. They're about honor. Okay. Right, so they get out there on the battlefield, get out there and motivate the troops, get out there and do that stuff, right? Leave this to the folks. Leave this to the folks who have achieved the steps. So would you say everyone is seeking justice or are just? Society, or is it just like the philosopher kings? Everybody benefits from a just society. Okay, the philosopher kings know what a just society looks like. Okay. Because they were. Okay. And it's, that's why we should trust them right, to help make the society we live in just. Which doesn't mean that producers should be, can, can be philosophers. Once again, it's not an equality thing. But within a just society, all of the parts will operate better and live better lives.
So everybody benefits from being in a just society, even if a just society in this case isn't an equal society. You said last class that there's the majority of people are in the class below the producers. Do they, just, are they included in people that benefit from a just society? Yes. Or they're just not included? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you can even think of, think of this, think of, so think of this being masters and slaves, right? As nobody's talking about the slaves. They're just not, they're like, not even talking about it. But there's a bunch of them. All right? Part of the, part of the understanding, the implicit understanding will be, the slaves will have better masters if those masters are cleave or, or, or have cleaved themselves to a just state of a, a just state of affairs. Doesn't, in this case, it doesn't mean that those masters will subsequently make them free. You know, that's, that, you know that's, once again, equality is not the thing. But you would rather have a master in a democracy if you're a slave than a master in a tyranny. You see what I'm saying? So that, that's why I want to make clear: like everybody's better off in Plato's. <laughs> right, in, in the just polls, everybody's better off, but everybody ain't equals. So I also want to kind of talk about this a little bit. So we have homologies. We got the importance of the actual learning system, but in, the, in this republic, I mean, it's a great literary piece of work. Right? There's there's metaphors that are really important in here too, right? and we kind of end class. Right? We kind of end the book with a big metaphor, the myth of Earth. But I kind of want to make sure that we're clear on what metaphors we discuss that are really important in this text, because once again, all of this stuff is going to be on the midterm. Your explanation of what this stuff means will be what, what I'll be asking for. Right, so the ring of guidance, right? This, this, is the, this is the fundamental text of political theory, and it's just filled with literature. And it's just filled with poetry, and even into poetry, right? And it's some of these moments that help to make the political theory clear. That's why one must pay attention to this. That's why it's in here. What was the ring of guidance? What was that supposed to be about? In a society where there are no constraints, <coughs> every individual is just going to take whatever they can because it benefits them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Left, left without, I mean, it wouldn't even be a society. Right? Left, left to our own individual devices, our appetites are going to rule. Right? Because there's no need for justice now. There's no conversation about it. Uh, the Ring of Guidance is, is supposed to show us who human beings are, what they would choose to do, right? the limits that they, with, without social limits, without political limits, without having to consider the needs and the safety of other people, human beings fundamentally will do just about anything to each other. So that's what this was supposed to be about. Die and wolf. This is a, we'll talk about it a little bit today. There's this whole metaphor about wool and the dye. Okay? It's like book three, something like that. Right? Who remembers what that is? We talked about it a little bit today. Right? Doesn't that have something to do with like the dye will only stick in the it, uh, the dye is kind of like the education or like the enlightenment, and then the wool is only a certain type of wool will be able to keep the dye in it. That's right. So it's kind of like the guardian class is the only class of people that's like, That's right. That's right. All right. That's exactly, that's exactly what the point of this is. And why a certain kind of material can go, get, gets, even, gets put into this process. But not all of wool can go through. Not all material, just a certain kind will take the dye best, purest. And that's the folks that achieve this, right? Men and metals, right? I think that was in uh, chapter four. We've already talked about it a little bit today. What's this whole metal thing about? The myth of the metals. Wasn't well, it kind of the same thing? Like that there's like different types of metals and um, you, you can't like mix them together? So that was, mess up. That's right. So that yeah. goes back to yeah. different methods. So if, if once again, um, homological, if I were going to put out here another category, I can put metals. 
and we can literally list the metals that go with each one of these classes. Right? Gold, silver, bronze, copper, that kind of deal. And part of the argument, of course, is you don't mix. Right? You don't metal M-E-D-D-L. Like the different classes should be meddling with each other. That's that's what that's 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 the takeaway from this whole event. Right? Okay. Once again, it's always about harmony, everything in its proper place. Allegory of the cave, clearly the most famous. Okay. One sentence, what is that supposed to teach us? something that's not what it is and what, what seems real may not be. So epistemology, right? It's like what you, what seems most of might just be shadows. Right? And it really is the thing that kind of sets us up that uh, what <coughs> what common knowledge might be that which can be gleaned from your senses, that kind of stuff. Might not it's not understand it might not tell us about the truth of the world. Right? That one has to go that this is the whole reason you would need the education would be to get beyond the understanding of the world that's limited to just what you can get from your senses. Because your senses could be wrong, and probably are. Or, or another way to look at this, too, is what makes the sensual world, right, that what you can know, what makes that true is the reality that stands behind it. So one, so one way or another, there's some, something behind it, with this metaphysics, right? There's something behind, right, our knowledge. There's something behind the physical world that makes the physical world meaningful. And the best of us, the most disciplined of us, and the best born of us, you have to be well born, can be put into a process so that we can, we can get into the position of understanding that, getting a glimpse into that. That's the world of the form. Let's spend a little more time. I keep talking about the forms. We haven't really talked about the forms so much. Like I haven't just asked you what else is the topic.